Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted this statue from the Sigmarite Mausoleum to a tabletop ready standard with contrast paint and some dry brushing. Here we go, here's the finished statue that will be painted in this video and I'll go through all the stages step by step and it's real quick to do, really easy, just dry brushing and contrast paint. So this is really beginner friendly and this will get you a really great tabletop ready piece of terrain to use in your Warcry or Age of Sigmar game. So the paints I've used are a mix of the contrast paints, the technical paints, all from Citadel and I also use some Vallejo paints as well and I'll put links in the description below so you can easily find all of the paints used in this video. And the brush I mostly use is a Kalinsky Synthetic number two brush and this is a great brush all rounder for all different projects. So this is a great set, really easy to build and looks awesome when put together but I've primed it here with the Citadel Chaos Black Spray and that's give, given a nice coat of that so we're all ready to go and get started and I've just blue tacked it to my painting handle and the first paints we're going to use are black and sky grey from Vallejo and I'm going to mix equal quantities, one part sky grey to one part black and then with this big very vegan makeup brush I'm just going to load the bristles up, use some card and some kitchen towel just to work the paint in the bristles and then get them off. And I've left a fair amount of paint on, so this is like a heavy dry brush. And this is gonna go over all of the stone parts of the model. I'm leaving this top statue of the skeleton guy. I'm not gonna go over him with this dark gray, but this is gonna be great for this column and the, also all the parts along the base. So I'm going over it and whenever you do dry brushing, just when you first start, just be quite gentle with how you're putting the strokes onto the model because you don't know quite how much paint is going to come off but then once you're happy you can see here i'm really going for it and being quite rough downward stroke circular motions giving that a nice coat then i go with just sky gray and i do the same thing work that into my bristles and then leave it quite a heavy dry brush again and i don't clean my brush in between these stages so we're just going straight with that paint and now i'm just going to again go gentle at first but i'm focusing on those edges and this is going to give us a nice edge hi highlight and those raised areas and then once I'm happy with how much paint is coming off I'm just spinning the mod around and then I can go a little bit more heavy so on these bits we really want those to be a lot brighter because we're going to be putting some contrast paints over these roses and things like that but on those edges too you want to really catch it with this sky grey this is going to be one of the main highlights here so just mostly downward strokes and then when you've got some of the sharper edges on the side go side to side as well a little bit of up and down there just to catch the corner and then once I get to the bits like the skulls, I can go a bit heavier. And now I'm using this sky gray also on this skeleton statue on the top of the pillar. And here I'm going mostly downward, but I'm also going from side to side a little bit too. And so I'm going quite heavy. You can see there's quite a bit coming off this, but it's really transforming it and bringing out all that awesome texture that you can find on this piece of terrain. This whole set's brilliant. I'm going to be doing videos for every piece that comes with it as well. So check out those videos coming soon. But this is the first one of this little mini series. And now I'm going over the bottom as well. And now I can be really rough. I know exactly how much paint's going to come off. So I'm really going for it, working it in there. And I'm going over all those skulls and raised areas to give a nice highlight. And also, as I get to the edge, I'm just going down with brush strokes just to give that edge a real nice highlight, just where it would naturally catch some light. Then we're going to take just white now. And so I do the same thing, but I haven't got as much paint on here and I'm being really gentle. So dry brushing again, I've worked off most of the paint now and I've been really careful not to put too much on. And I'm just picking out all the raised areas little gentle strokes mostly downward really catching those raised areas as much as I can and then again just being really really gentle now because this I don't want it too bright we're not going to put white over all the model because but this part of the model this skeleton statue is going to have the contrast paint going over it so we can really get away with using this white highlight but normally when you highlight and you don't put anything over it if you do a little dry brush like this you don't have to highlight with white you usually pick like a lighter color of the base color and then go with that so if we were doing a highlight on on black we'd use like a gray kind of thing so i'll keep working that in and i'm also going to go over this little area here with the skull and the roses because we're going to cover those in contrast paints too and then when there's hardly any paint at all left i just really really gently and softly just go over the most uh, 
protruding parts of the stonework just to catch those edges. But um, yeah, mostly going to get that. And also these skulls, they're going to get some contrast paint too. So I give those some of that white highlight too and just flick along the top and a tiny, tiny bit on those corners too. Then I switch to this very vegan brush and I go for another coat of the white just to really bring that out because I want that contrast paint to come through. And so I want to catch those raised areas. And this kind of makeup brush is going to give me a little bit more precision now. So it's kind of pointed at the end, but it's still got this really soft bristles so we can get a really nice effect for our dry brushing. And you can see we're leaving a lot of that dark black and gray underneath so we are going to get some shadow coming through and this is going to work really well with that contrast paint almost like a zenith or highlight so this is going to give us a real nice effect on this terrain and this brush is perfect for the skulls and you can pick these brushes up for like three pound a pair if you can find them but any kind of soft brush will do now we're moving on to the contrast skeleton horde and this is going to go over all the skulls that we want to look like actual skulls and skeleton horde is a great paint it doesn't dry really dark so you can be quite generous with how you, much you put on and then i'm going to go along there and pick out those at the bottom and you can see we've still got a lot of the dark paint coming through underneath for the shadow and that's just going to give us the feeling that all of this piece these skulls have been buried for a long time now we're going to take snake bite leather and this is perfect for leather, but we're going to use it on the statue. And I've got this bigger brush, and this is nothing fancy, just a really old brush, but it's got a nice large set of bristles on there. So it's going to hold a decent amount of paint. So whenever I do a larger area like this, I like to use a bigger brush, but I'm not swamping it with contrast paint. And that's something that you don't have to do. And I think that's like a, it's got it a lot of bad press in the, in the past with the contrast paint it's just where people have swamped it on but you don't have to here you can see i'm just giving it a pretty even coat all over um so it's not pooling there's not tons of it there are times when you do need to put more paint on if you've got like really deep recesses you want this to give you a shadow or you want a wet blend on the model but for this we just want to cover it we've got all that nice highlight coming through from the dry brush and we've done and we've got the shadows from the original dark paint as well so certainly don't swamp it on for something like this and even with this skull i'm not putting a lot on here so this skull i wanted to be part of the column part of the statue so i'm doing that in the snake bite leather so it fits in with the statue on top and these little kind of um like crest that goes around it i'm just giving that a coat of it too and there's one on each side and there's also a tiny little skull and a little crest on the base so i'm just going to cover those two now I'm going to take the contrast Space Wolves Grey. I just wanted to see what would happen if I put this over one of those broken tombstones at the bottom just to break up that colour and just to show us that that is a different colour headstone. So I'm just putting a coat of this on and working through. And you'll see that that dry brushing we did earlier is really going to come through and give us a nice highlight. So just one nice even coat on this. But what I tend to do for the recesses, try and get a little bit more paint in there. So I start and end my brush stroke where I want most of that paint to build up and then push and pull it around so that it gets in the recesses but leaves the flatter raised areas nice and highlighted. Now we're going to take some contrast creed camo and then I'm just going to block in all these leaves and again we're going to get the highlight coming underneath from that dry brushing and it's going to give us a really nice effect. So the idea with these leaves and the roses is that they're real but that skeleton statue on top it's not metal it's not stone, it's something kind of in between as well. So we're getting all these different materials and textures going on. But with this natural look, we're just going to cover these leaves in nice and green. And I think this works really well with the overall piece at the end. Now we're going to take Volupus Pink and I'm going to paint all the roses this colour. And I want to do this because I've got a set of uh, Thorns of the Briar Queen that I want to make from the night horn and the roses there I've included a pink so I want this all to tie in as if it's their territory for something I'm planning on in the future plus I really like this color and I think it's going to work really nicely against that green and also that color we've gone with with the snake bite leather on the statue so I'm just putting that in covering it all over all those roses now everything's completely dry I'm taking the Hylac oxide and I was going to leave it like this and not worry about weathering it a bit, but I tried it on the back and I was really happy with how it came out, but I'm not covering it in it. I'm going to be really um, not too generous at all with the amount of paint and be really careful of how much I'm putting on. And I'm just going to pick out all the areas where kind of gunk and things like that would naturally pull. So this is quite bronzy, so I really wanted to go with this verdigris 
or kind of patina effect on it. And I think this in the Hylac Oxide is perfect for this. When I did the bell for the bell tower that came in the Catacombs box set for Warcry, I put, I put a bit too much on and I covered the whole thing. But now on this, I'm just going to be really gentle and just pick it out. But you could certainly leave it as it is. You don't need to do this stage unless you want to. But I think we are in the eight points. Things are going to get a bit grubby, a bit grimy. They've been there a long time. So there's going to be some sort of weathering. And this is quite quick to do. You know, we don't have to worry about being precise with our brush strokes. It's a nice chalky paint and it's going to dry um, a lot paler than it is when it first goes on. And so really you're just dotting it on, going in all those creases, any anywhere there's a little shadow or an area where some gunk would build up. I just put a little bit there and then dotted it around and then move my brush constantly dotting in all those little recesses as you can see there that's the bottom half done and so now i'm working up to this top bit this little shield the eye sockets i put a dot in each one and then again just going underneath there in those little shaded areas and you can see it's dried quite pale and um, real chalky effect so perfect for this verdigris patina kind of look that we're going for I'm also going to use this effect a similar way on the little buildings that come with the Sigmarite mausoleum set. So this will tie the pieces all in nicely together. And I might put a little bit on some of the spikes on the fence too. So that's going to be nice for the whole model, bringing it all together with the rest of the pieces that come in that great set. So here now I'm just turning the model, getting that paint underneath in all the creases and really working it around. And it's a good idea to take your time here. You don't need to rush it. I mean, all up, this probably didn't even take... 30 minutes for the whole piece so it's quite quick to paint um, but this is a really important part and I think if you put too much on here you could almost ruin the work you've done already but I think this le snake bite leather works really nicely on this statue and whether you go for this weathering effect or not I think you're going to be happy with the results you get in such a quick time with such quick and simple effects and here now again dotted it into those eye sockets that looks quite a lot at the moment but don't worry that's going to dry and we can always suck a little bit up with our brush um, but when it dries, it's, again, it's going to be paler than what it looks like now. And just working in those little crevices. I put tiny bits in the chips on the saw too. And there we go. And then a little bit there under that hood where you get some gunk building up. And you can use your finger just to wipe off any excess paint that goes on the other areas. And now just to finish on this hood itself, there's just a few little dimples there that we can put a little bit in. Just dotting it on and then just spreading that paint around. And then that's us all finished. And here we go, here's our statue from the Sigmarite mausoleum set, all painted to a tabletop ready standard with some simple dry brushing and some contrast paints. So I've got to say, I'm really happy with how this turned out. and I can't wait to get all the other pieces finished. And here's the whole model. I think those colours have worked really nicely, just tying that snake bite leather in from the top part of the statue to the skull. And here's the statue up close, that nice weather effect from the Nahilak Oxide. I was really happy with it. I'm glad I've gone for it now and didn't keep it as it was. And then at the base, that nice wallopus pink, really kind of standing out and bringing it to life a little bit as those roses climb up the pillar. If you like the look of this set and you'd like to give it a go yourself, then I got mine from the Mortal Realms magazine, which is difficult to get hold of now on back order, um, but you can still buy the Sigmarite Mausoleum set. So look out for that. And I'll put a link in the description below to Element Games, where you can pick that up and you can save 20% there with the discount too. And I'll also put links to all the paints we used in the video. And so you can easily find them. And if you follow those links to Element Games, they're affiliate links, but they don't cost you extra. In fact, you can save up to 20% on everything you purchase there. And for every sale made through a link, I get a small commission, and that's gonna help me do loads more videos like this and develop the channel. So thanks so much for that support. It's brilliant, and I really appreciate it. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share our ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description and it'll be great to see you there. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that it gave you a good idea of just how quick and easy it is to paint some of this terrain for your game. But I'd love to hear what you think, so join in in the comment section below. It'll be awesome to hear your thoughts and feedbacks. But thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this, and don't forget to hit that notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. <laughs>